ASHTO T27 and ASTM C136 are the standard method of test for sieve analysis of both fine and coarse aggregates. The materials which are retained on the number 4 sieve or 4.75 millimeter are considered to be coarse aggregate while the material which passes the number 4 sieve are considered to be fine aggregate. The grading and maximum size of an aggregate in a concrete mixture can affect various properties, including strength and workability. This procedure is also used to determine the grading of materials that are to be used as aggregates or simply to see if certain aggregates meet proposed specifications. Furthermore, it can be used to determine the relationship between porosity and the packing of aggregates. In this procedure, a set of nested sieves with progressively smaller openings determine the size distribution of the aggregates sampled. The size of the field sample should be that which is shown in ASHTO T2 or four times that which is required, whichever is greater. Though the minimum size test sample for fine dry aggregate is only 300 grams, the test sample size varies based upon maximum aggregate size. When sieve analysis, including the material finer than the number 200 sieve, is the only testing proposed, the sample may be reduced to testing size in the field to avoid shipping excessive amounts of materials to the laboratory. If a test sample size of 20 kilograms is required, then it is recommended that you use a mechanical sieve shaker. When using a mechanical sieve shaker, be sure to set the timer to the appropriate calibrated time, bearing in mind that greater than 10 minutes inside the sieve shaker may result in degradation of the sample. When determining the amount of material finer than the 75 micron sieve, be sure to use ASHTO T11, standard test method for materials finer than the 75 micron sieve by washing, and not ASHTO T27, standard test method for both fine and coarse aggregate sieve analysis. Now that we understand the use and application of ASHTO T27 and ASTM C136, let's move on to a detailed performance review. To perform this test, we'll need a balance conforming to M231, which is accurate to 0.1% of the sample. For ASTM, the scale can be accurate to 0.1 grams or 0.1% of the sample. We'll also need the appropriate sieves, as well as an oven with a capable range of 110 plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius. As our first step is to dry the sample to a constant mass. It's worth noting that for control purposes, particularly when rapid results are desired, it is generally not necessary to dry coarse aggregate for the sieve analysis test. The results are a little affected by the moisture content unless the nominal maximum size is smaller than 12.5 millimeters or one half inch. We can now nest the appropriate sieves in order of decreasing size and pour our sample into the top sieve. We can now agitate the sample by hand or mechanical means. Be sure not to overload any individual sieve. Use guard sieves if necessary or test the sample in separate size increments.
For mixtures of coarse and fine aggregate, split the portion of the sample finer than the 4.75 millimeter or number 4 sieve as necessary. We want to continue sieving until not more than 0.5% by mass of retained particles pass a given sieve with one minute of agitation. We can now determine the mass of the material retained on each sieve to the nearest 0.1%. When determining the mass on each sieve, it is permissible to rotate stones through the sieves, but do not force the stones through the sieves. We now want to total the mass of all individual size increments and check that it is within 0.3% of the original sample mass. If our sample was previously washed using Ashto T11, be sure to add the material that passed the 200 sieve by washing to the material that passed the 200 sieve during dry sieving. We can now calculate the percent passing each sieve to the nearest 0.1% on the basis of the total mass of the original dry sample. We then want to calculate our finest modulus to the nearest 0.01. And finally, when reporting our results, we want to report our results to the nearest 1%. Let's now go through an example of how to perform these calculations. Let's assume that we have done a fine aggregate sieve analysis, and the original sample weight was 308.8 grams. We have put this sample through the sieve shaker and have accumulated the following masses on each sieve that we used. We had no grams retained on the 9.5 millimeter sieve. We had 3.2 grams retained on the 4.75 millimeter sieve, 46.1 grams on the 2.36 millimeter sieve, and you can see the rest of the numbers listed here. One of the first things we want to do is total the mass of all individual size increments. Here, we wind up with 307.9 grams after sieving. You may remember that step nine of our performance review was to total the mass of all individual size increments and check that it is within 0.3% of the original sample mass. We do this because if we have lost more than 0.3%, or perhaps gained more than 0.3%, our test would be considered invalid. However, here, if we do the calculation, we can see that we have retained 99.7% of the sample. Therefore, this is a valid test and we'll continue with the calculations. We can now calculate the individual percent retained on each sieve. On the first sieve, the 9.5 millimeter, there was no material retained. Therefore, the individual percent retained is obviously zero. On the second sieve, the 4.75 millimeter, there were 3.2 grams of material retained. So here, we would take the 3.2 grams of material and divide it by the original sample weight, 308.8 grams, and multiply this number by 100 to come up to 1% retained on the 4.75 millimeter sieve. And as you can see, these are percentage calculations, so let's fill in the numbers below and move on to cumulative percent retained. The cumulative percent retained is achieved by simply taking the individual percent retained on any given sieve and adding to it the individual percent retained of all the previous sieves. Therefore, on the 2.36 millimeter sieve, our cumulative percent retained would be 16%, while on the 1.18 millimeter sieve, our cumulative percent retained would be 33%. And I hope you can see how this works, so let's move on to percent passing. Percent passing is achieved by simply subtracting from 100 the cumulative percent retained. 
As an example, if 0% of our material were retained on the 9.5 millimeter sieve, then 100% of that material must have passed. If on the 4.75 millimeter sieve, 1% of the material were retained, then 99% must have passed. And again, I hope you can see how this works, so let's talk about specification. Let's now compare our results to the specification presented in ASTM C33 Standard Specification for Concrete Aggregates. In Section 6, the grading requirements are presented for a fine aggregate sample. It states that on the 9.5 millimeter sieve, 100% of the sample must pass through that sieve. As you can see here, that is what occurred with our sample. For the 4.75 millimeter sieve, 95 to 100 percent of the sample must pass. For us, 99 percent of our sample passed. Therefore, we are within the specification. And if you look at the rest of the numbers, you can see that our sample meets the specification of ASTM C33, Standard Specification of Concrete Aggregates. We must now calculate the finest modulus and report this number to the nearest 0 0.01. To calculate our finest modulus, we add the total cumulative percent retained of all the material in the sample, which is coarser than the 150 micron sieve, and divide this sum by 100. So here, the sum of those percentages is 304. And if we divide the 304 by 100, our finest modulus would be 3.04. And if you would like to see more examples of calculating sieve analysis, please visit the Blackboard section of this training program. And here for your review are the deviations between Ashto T27 and ASTM C136. And this will conclude Ashto T27 and ASTM C136, standard test method for sieve analysis of both fine and coarse aggregate.